Buster the Steamroller had been given a special treat by Miss Jenny Packard. After he had safely tested the Sodor racetrack, something that Max and Monty failed to do, Miss Jenny had awarded him with a new coat of paint and a number. Buster was overjoyed and immediately chose the number 20. Once it was painted on, Miss Jenny stood back and admired her steamroller. If only our former number 21 Nigel could see you now, Buster, Miss Jenny beamed. He would be so proud that he finally has a number to come before him. Buster felt very proud, and the other machines were happy for him. All except Patrick, the concrete mixer. One evening, Jack, Alfie and Patrick were working late at Crosby Station. One of the platform beams had come loose, so they had to repair it before finishing off for the night. Patrick grumbled dreadfully about Buster's recent achievement, but Jack and Alfie were confused. Have you ever noticed that there's not a number 13 machine? asked Alfie. Now that you mention it, replied Jack, you're right. It's strange how your number 12 and Oliver's 14 then... May I cut in for just a moment, lads? Interrupted Patrick. <laughs> he had just finished for the evening and was preparing to leave when the conversation caught his interest. I will admit that there was a number 13 machine a long time ago. He paused impressively. Jack and Alfie looked. What was he like? Asked Alfie. Well, to cut a long story short said Patrick. He was the most ruthless and rude machine we'd ever had. And this was the story that Patrick told Jack and Alfie. Long ago, Mr. Packard, Miss Jenny's father, opened a Sodor construction company. He owned five machines. Kelly the Crane, Patrick, Isabella the Sentinel flatbed lorry, and Ned the steam shovel. He also owned a very rude and bad-tempered steam lorry. He had no name, so the machines referred to him as Number 13. Number 13 was a mechanical failure, and every time he broke down due to stress or temperamental problems, he would always blame the others. His banksman had told him that his attitude would cost him dearly. The reply he always got was, Ugh! The sooner it gets me, the better. One night, Mr. Packard asked number 13 to make a delivery to the other side of the island, but he never returned. It turned out that a combination of the heavy load he had been given and his temperamental attitude had set his engine to overload, causing a major explosion. It was Kelly who was sent out the following day to retrieve what was left of number 13, and no one spoke of him again. And some might say, Patrick concluded, that those who tell the story of number 13's downfall will get a visit from him. Looks like I might be on the list tonight, lads, he added with a sly chuckle. Patrick then left for home, leaving Jack and Alfie in a stunned silence. Patrick found himself feeling very uncomfortable as he drove home. He feared that the story of number 13 was playing on his mind more than it should have. When Patrick reached the safety of the Sodor Construction Company's yard, he felt much better. Most of the other machines were already there, fast asleep. Patrick rolled into his shed and was just about to call it a day when he stopped. <laughs> Someone was in his shed already, but it wasn't any of the other machines. A dirty old steam lorry was in Patrick's berth. Its paintwork was grubby and scratched. There were dents all over it, but its headlamps seemed to be working just fine. There was no face to greet him, but Patrick noticed through the grimy paintwork the number 13. Patrick was horrified. He felt like he wanted to call for help, but feared he'd wake the others if he did. The cold spectre of number 13 blinked its headlamps at him, and then disappeared. Patrick was left in a long, 
awful silence. The next morning, Miss Jenny asked Patrick and his banksman to collect some sacks of concrete for a new station platform. Patrick rumbled into the yard and found Jack already there. Jack gave a small warning, but Patrick didn't reply. His banksman jumped down to speak to Jack. I don't know what's wrong with him, he said. When I started him up this morning, all he kept going on about was some number 13. Don't be daft, said Jack Spanksman. There's no number 13 in the pack. After seeing the look on Patrick's face and remembering the story, Jack knew 